Welcome to the Trotter Project Kitchen Sessions, where professionals from all aspects of the hospitality industry have come together to share a little bit of their knowledge with you and to raise some funds for our community. I'm Charles Jolie from Chicago. I've been in the business for more than 20 years behind the bar, running beverage programs and opening different restaurants and bars. Let's talk about one of the fundamental skills when it comes to building cocktails, and that is shaking. So we have a couple options when it comes to the type of cocktail shaker we can use. If you're building cocktails at home and you don't have either one of these that you see on top of my bar right now, that's okay. We'll talk about some options if you don't have a bar set, a bar tool set at home. So the cocktail shaker of choice for most professional bartenders, if you're out and about that, you'll see is something that looks like this. And this is what we call a Boston shaker or a tin on tin or a two piece shaker. It's simply one large tin, one small tin, and they fit together and they seal up. Um, very quick, very easy to use. They seal tight when they're well designed. They come apart easily once you get the, get the hang of it uh, and they pour very, very quickly. Now, if I were to ask you before we started this to draw me a picture of a cocktail shaker, you probably would draw something more in this shape. And this is a classic three piece or cobbler shaker. And this is something that you watch old movies and whatnot. Um, this is what the bartender is using and is kind of tied to that romantic era of the cocktail. And they're still used heavily in some places like Japan and some, um, some bars still choose to use these. They're not my favorite and I bet that some of you out there have had this same experience. First and foremost, you've got three pieces, this cap, uh, you have the secondary piece that has the built-in strainer, and then you have your large tin where you put your cocktail and your ice. Once you shake your cocktail, um, oftentimes when you go to remove this secondary piece, it seals up and it's very, very difficult to remove. Secondly, if you're not making cocktails at home super often, this cap tends to get lost. And I see people using these two, um, these two pieces without a top on it, putting napkins or something, and it's just not, um, not the best look necessarily. And lastly, these holes are very, very small. And so when you're um, shaking out your cocktail, you're pouring it out from here, the strain is quite slow. And I don't know, call me impatient, but I want my cocktail now. Um, so three-piece shaker is great if this is what you like to use. Again, it's all preference, um, but the two-piece shaker is the one that I want to focus on and, and, uh, and talk about now, or this Boston shaker. All right, so very simple, two pieces of metal, two, two metal, two stainless steel cups here, uh, and, and this is how it goes. I'm actually going to make a cocktail because... I'm working from home today, so I, we, can, we can do this. I've got my jigger, we're, gonna, we're going to go ahead and measure this up. I'm just gonna make a whiskey sour. I've got three quarters ounce of some fresh lemon juice here that I've squeezed. I'm gonna do a half an ounce of simple syrup, and that's just one part of sugar, one part water that I've done. And then I'm gonna do an ounce and a half of rye whiskey. Uh, in this and you can see I'm using a jigger and I'm always going to measure my cocktails It's just gonna help with your consistency if you taste a drink that you made for the first time And it's a little sweet or tart then you know the next time. Okay Well, I'll bump it up by a quarter ounce of citrus or in my case probably an extra quarter ounce of booze Why not? Uh, so you've got your cocktail in, in one tin. We're gonna reach into our ice tin here and Fill up our large tin with ice, and it doesn't need to be filled. And as a matter of fact, you don't want it to be filled. Halfway, two thirds is all you have to do here. I'm gonna pour my cocktail in, and here's where we, we get off base, because the tendency, we love things symmetrical, is to want to put our small tin straight up and down. We actually wanna put it on an angle, uh, so you have one flush side. You can. Give it a little squeeze together. You'll see people give it a little tap. You'll see people bang them on the bar as well to seal them. You do not need to do that. All it does is beat up your bar and beat up your tins. These are designed to go together and so they fit very well. Just a little squeeze. When you're holding your cocktail shaker, I like to always use two hands. Sometimes you would do a double shake with one in each hand, but that's, that's 200 level shaking, let's say. Um, I'm gonna keep one thumb behind my small tin and then two fingers on top of my big tin. And that's so when I'm shaking, if this seal does happen to break for some reason, I still have my fingers here to hold it together. 
Next thing, as we actually go for our shake, um, nobody's first time looks super pretty, so however your shake looks, just work on it. You're gonna find your rhythm. So just a little, just a little back and forth, as they say, to wake this uh, cocktail up. Again, we're adding dilution, we're aerating the cocktail, um, we're, we're chilling it down. So as this is set here, I can almost hear uh, the seal start to break and it's loosened up for me. Now, sometimes you'll see, you'll get um, a small tin that's stuck on the top and you'll see people wrestling with it. You have an airtight seal there. When you shake this, you form that magic seal and so the small tin stays um, in there. If you're gonna do that for the first time, do it over your kitchen sink just in case you didn't get a, an airtight seal. So all you have to do is create a tiny air gap between your large tin and your small tin, and this will come free. You can do that by holding the flat side and giving it a little tap and then wiggling out your shaker. Whatever your style is, you can squeeze your large shaker and wiggle out the top. You can give it a little twist. Whatever you, whatever, whatever your vibe is, you, 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 you pick your poison here. You'll see bartenders as well who are working, and it's kind of called, called working flair. They're just little moves that make it um, smoother and quicker as we're working. So you'll see a quick shake, a pop, and then don't forget about uh, that little uh, hesitation here with your small tin. You saw all that liquid that poured down into my large tin. All that is delicious cocktail. Now I just shook that like three times um, to demo this for you. So uh, this cocktail is probably going to be a little bit over diluted, but um, that's okay. I'm going to drink it anyways. You see, I've got my strainer here as well. This strainer with the spring is what's known as a Hawthorne strainer. Um, typically, it'll come with the cocktail shaker that you've purchased, and if they're well designed, they should fit very nicely just to hold back the ice or if you're shaking with any fresh fruit or anything like that. I like to hold my tin, keep one finger over the top of the Hawthorne strainer and then pour your cocktail in. At this point, you can add any bitters you might want on top. You can garnish with a little bit of citrus zest or whatnot, but most importantly, it's time to enjoy your cocktail. All right, we did okay. That's gonna be a sensible mid-afternoon cocktail. Now I'd mentioned, if you don't have a Boston shaker, you don't have a proper bar tool set, that is okay. I still want you making cocktails at home. I've made cocktails in airplanes, I've made them in hotel rooms and all sorts of places where I didn't have the tools at hand that I needed. So get creative. If I were in a pinch, I would grab simply a water bottle or a coffee mug that had a screw top lid. Go ahead, exact same thing, ice, cocktail inside, get in anything with a uh, watertight seal, and you shake that sucker up and pour it into your glass. You can use a slotted spoon. This is, look at this, we're, we're breaking design boundaries right now. Uh, you've got your a la minute Hawthorne strainer and cocktail shaker, whatever it takes. At the end of the day, you still have your cocktail in the glass. Thanks so much for joining me for a few minutes to chat cocktails. Feel free to reach out to me at Charles Jolie on Instagram or at Drink Craft House on Instagram. If you have any questions about some of the bar tools that I designed or any other burning cocktail questions, I am very, very happy to answer them. And most importantly, thank you to the Trotter Project. Please do head over to trotterproject.org and consider donating to this very important community fund. Cheers.